Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Constance the Reader. It's December 27th. We're doing a little reading vlog. So the point of this reading vlog, I only have to read 10 more books till I get to 300 books read for the year. My original goal was 200. I already met it and I was really excited about that. And the fact that I only have 10 more to read is like, I do wanna just knock that out. Okay, we'll have a few more days till January. I am in the middle of reading a few other regular books, but obviously the easiest way to reach this goal is to read some manga. So we're gonna talk about the volumes that I'm gonna be reading tonight, leading in tomorrow. I might even go to the bookstore, we'll see. But anyway, let's get into what I need to read to reach this goal. So first and foremost, four volumes that I will be prioritizing are the last four volumes in Sweat and Soap, okay? I said that this was a series I wanted to finish before the year was over, and I only have four volumes left. I feel like I can do it. Of all the things I said I wanted to read and finish, this is the most realistic. So I will be reading these four. For funsies, I got the third volume of The Geek X Hitman. This is the last volume in the short series. It makes me so sad. I feel like it's gonna be great, but I'm sad that it's only three volumes. Like, I feel like it should have more. It has enough for more, that's just me. And I got volume five of a Kowloon Generic Romance. I don't know where this series is going, but I'm enjoying myself as I read it. So I wanna read this volume. It's just important to me. So I feel very confident that I will be able to read these very quickly. I also said that I wanted to read Platinum End. So I don't think that I will finish Platinum End before the year is over. I'd have to really hunger down. I think it's 14 volumes and I'm only on volume five. <laughs> so there is the fifth volume, the sixth volume and the seventh volume. I don't know that I'm gonna be super motivated to read all three of these, but I'm at least committing to the fifth volume. Maybe I'm selling myself a little bit short but I just don't think I'm gonna finish this series. I like it, but I don't feel like I love it enough to really sit down and power through it. So with that being said, the palette cleansers that are gonna come in between, Mashal, the next volume I need to read is volume nine. I may even, if I'm like not really feeling Platinum End, I might just finish with Mashal, read volume five and then maybe read more Mashal but I also wanna read A Witch's Love at the End of the World. So volume two and volume three. This is only a three volume series, I think. I'm pretty sure. I think so. Oh, look what's in the, look what's inside of Right Stuff. We miss you, Right Stuff. We really miss you, I'm telling you. I have only like browsed the, Crunchyroll website for manga once since they merged with Right Stuff, but like Right Stuff basically got absorbed by Crunchyroll. <sighs> I'll say this, I'm really glad that they kept the warehouses open for Right Stuff. The Crunchyroll website sucks to navigate for manga. I just feel like Right Stuff had it right, all pun intended, okay? It, they just They just did it correctly. And Crunchyroll has always been kind of like funky. It's fine. So that makes me sad. I think that this is only three volumes. Oh, yep. Literally says at the very top final. <laughs> I'm just take a chance to fucking look. So I feel like because these are shorter, these will be very easy for me to like slide in there. You know, uh, if I'm like really not feeling platinum end, but I want something a little bit more lovey dovey after reading Sweat and Soap, I'm just gonna go ahead and read that. So yes. Um, that's what I'm going to be reading tonight and tomorrow. I don't think that I will finish all of these tonight. Who knows? I do plan on starting with Sweat and Soap. That's the main goal for me right now. I would like to finish that tonight if I can. I might read two, read something else, and then read the last two. We'll see. Um, but yeah, but I think you can see my tree. So exciting. Um... But yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. Moving into a little bit tomorrow. I do need to leave the house. I've been in the house for 
I've been in the house all day, but it really sucked the weather today. Like the weather was very gloomy. It rained all day, uh, kind of chilly, not really that big of a deal, but my husband was also off. So we just kind of hung out, but surprisingly enough, I'm not going to be rushing to Barnes and Noble for the sale. It just really doesn't seem like that sale is very good. <laughs> it used to be 50% off hardcovers. Now it's 33% off. And then if you're a member, you get this much. I'm the free one. I'm not the I'm not paying for that membership anymore. So I don't even know if like that additional stuff applies to me. But Books a Million has a good sale. Okay, they're actually doing 50% off of their of some of their books and not all of them are hardcover. So there's some romance that are mixed in. They're doing buy one get one half off. So I think I might actually go to Books a Million instead. Uh, it's right down the street from my house, so why the hell not? And I might take you guys along with me because this is going to be a shorter little reading vlog. I can then, if I get anything, I can incorporate that into like the end of the year book haul. Uh, you know, I haven't decided if I want to do an unhaul video because funnily enough, last year I wanted to do an unhaul video. I don't know why, but every time I filmed it, I just hated it, but I never got rid of those books. <laughs> They're literally in the closet. So maybe I'll finally do an unhaul video. And then because I have this week off from work, maybe I will actually finally go to Second and Charles and just sell them because I really do need to make room in the closet in my office in general. Like there's no fucking room in there. And my ideal situation would be to put my manga box sets in there. There's literally no room for them my manga box sets don't need to be out on on the floor in my office especially if i've already read them so there's just no point it was like wasting space for the stuff that i could have on display but yes that's what we're going to be doing first i'm going to eat my ice cream and feed my dog and then we will get into the reading and i can tell you guys about what i'm reading it's like seven o'clock at night right now uh, i'm probably gonna put on a christmas movie because i didn't really watch a lot of christmas stuff this year I did watch some good Christmas movies though. Like Xmas was really good. Um, I don't know what these other ones were. I'll figure it out and then we'll come back and talk about it because I'll tell y'all what I'm gonna watch. Um, but I did just watch Friends and Family Christmas. I saw that recommended on Twitter because people were saying that the Kristen Stewart movie, is it is it Season's Greetings or something? My sister had me watch that literally yesterday when she was here. And a few hours when I got back to my house, I already saw like a Twitter post where it was like, that movie is so traumatic. <laughs> it's not good. There are better sapphic holiday movies. And they recommended this one. And Friends and Family Christmas was really good. There wasn't even really like, I wouldn't even say there was a miscommunication trope in this. Okay. Not the kind that like pissed me off in romance because some pissed me off. This was fine, totally fine. No one had to pretend that they were straight. No one had to be like humiliated over and over and over again. It was just like very, like the families are supportive. Okay, it's like a little bit of a fake dating trope, which I do like those personally. I liked it, I think it was really good. I literally got Peacock just to watch this movie because I'm pretty sure that was the only thing it was on. Also Peacock sucks. Okay, this doesn't have a lot going on with it in my opinion. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna eat my bowl of ice cream, I'm gonna feed my dog, and then we will get into reading. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we're back. I read volume eight and volume nine of Sweat and Soap. Volume eight was your basic like kind of filler. Oh, we're going to the beach, beach, let's go to the beach type of situation. Very cute, you know, looking cute in the bikini per huge. And I'm pretty sure at the end of this one was when they're kind of, oh yeah. So at the end of this one, like kids are brought up. Asako asks Kotaro, like, what are your opinions on kids? He's like, oh yeah, I like him for the most part. His younger sister, even though like they're not 
that far in age. There's not like a huge age gap between him and his younger sister. Like he still technically has more experience with a kid, I think, than Asako has with her brother. And she's just, you know, seeing people with kids out and about. She's like, oh my God, that's cute. I just don't have experience with children. And in the ninth volume, she meets her friend from grade school, whose name is Mitsuki. So Mitsuki was someone that Asako knew from grade school. And, uh, and I guess like we're talking middle school, high school. She now has like a two year old daughter and Mitsuko is like very quiet, reserved, just very chill and laid back, which is like, oh, Mitsuki, I'm sorry. Mitsuki is very chill and laid back. And she and Asako don't see each other all the time, but they have an easy friendship. When they're having lunch, this fucking bitch from elementary school that was in elementary school with Asako had the fucking nerve. Okay, let me see this fucking bitch really quick. Ooh, I was hot. I was hot and heated. Um, so she goes to see her friend, right? And then this blonde haired fucking bitch comes out of nowhere. Let me, let me see where the bitch is. Skipping over. Okay. This bitch right here, okay? As I've said, name is Asako. Why is this bitch calling her a stinko? I was like, what the fuck? I, I know what her name is. I am I reading this wrong? No, this bitch was her bully. And she continued to call her a stinko in front of Mitsuki, okay? The reason why she knows the blonde haired bitch is because she has a little child and those children play together. And let me tell you something. If I saw you talking shit to my friend like that, fuck you and your kid. I'm sorry. Our children aren't playing together because I don't trust you not to rub off on the child, which may rub off on my child. That's all I'm saying. Fuck you, bitch. Study through the whole conversation. She's calling her a stinko. I just don't think I could ever be so nasty and mean. We, we've all been a bully every now and then, okay? We, we know that. We've all been kind of shitty to people. I would never do something like that. And just the fact that like they're adults at this point and you're still gonna call her that. So nasty, so passive aggressive, so shitty. It was sickening, which in turn makes Asako just like miserable for two weeks long. She's already very self-conscious about the fact that she sweats a lot. That's the whole point of sweat and soap. Kotaru is just thinking, okay, well, I can't wait to see Asako, Asako when she comes home because she, she went to see her family. That's how, where she met her friend again. Asako, mentally ruined, mentally ruined, clearly putting on a facade, hiding everything, not comfortable enough to talk, and I'm pissed off. And then we get the final breakdown. Okay, and that makes me angry. I was like, kind of like, meh on this one. This one had me sad, especially because, okay, so the first part of this is they go to a festival and they get separated and Asuka doesn't have her phone. So Kotaru has to smell her to find her, like through, through the crowd of people, very cute. Then we also get a flashback of Kotaru when he's trying to comfort Asako. And then we get a flashback to when he was a kid. His mom has a degenerative eye thing. And like, she just slowly has gotten more and more blind over time. I don't know that she's completely blind when we meet her, but she really can't see anything. And we just saw like a kind of glimpse to him when he was a kid. Uh, I mean, honestly, I really like Sweat and Soap. It just, there's just so many things, so many characters, so many stories that you see that are very like lovely, but also I, I guess there's a lot of representation in Sweat and Soap and I like that, but the stories and the personal like background that you see of people that aren't necessarily a main character, but it is still great to see that. Like even, even Asuka's friend Mitsuki, she talks about how she's separated from her husband and she's fine with that because for her, she can only kind of like have one person. She had a great relationship with her husband she was all about him, but then she had her kid and she only had enough room to give all of her love and attention to her child. And that caused like a, a weird thing between her and her husband, which always makes me sad 
but I, I really like that. I like that a person like that is represented in something like this because I feel like there's a lot of people that exist like that. And a lot of, a lot of the times we don't get, I, I feel like there's some shame to that because I think maybe some people might view that as selfish, but I don't think that she's selfish. But anyway, I hope that we see Mitsuki um, in the next two volumes. Obviously they're gonna get married. So I hope that Mitsuki is in the wedding somehow, but yeah. So at this point, oh yeah, I think Mitsuki is right there in the front. Um, at this point, it is now nine o'clock, okay? Because when I said it was seven, it was actually 7.59. So it's like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> it's not that I'm tired, but like this is around the time where I'm sitting on that side of the sofa with the heat blanket on. I've popped an edible and the dog is sitting with me and we're falling asleep to Lord of the Rings. So I gotta keep up with tradition. So that's what I will be doing now. And I'm gonna pick up reading tomorrow. Now I'm still going to, I think I might dip into volume 10 while I'm sitting there before the edible hits because why not? I've been reading One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. I just kind of picked this up at a whim. Cause again, y'all know I'm a mood reader. So if I'm just like feeling like I could read that, I'll pick it up. And I've made pretty good progress. I'm on page 191 I think I'm about a, a little under 50% of the way through the book I have a feeling that I can finish this by the end of the week before it's January but like I am taking my time so that's why I wanted to prioritize the reading with like manga just in case I didn't finish this and again obviously my goal was 200 this is just like a personal thing for me because I'm so close to 300 that I'm like, I kind of just want to read these. It's the most I've read in a year. So that's really exciting for me. Uh, yeah, so with that being said, we're gonna pick this up tomorrow. If I do end up reading another volume, I'll just fill y'all in. Hopefully the weather is better. I'll take y'all on a walk because I haven't been on a walk in a while. Uh, and we're just gonna have a grand old time and a grand fun little day. But yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. Kitty, what's up? What you thinking? Huh? We're going to the house. Okay, go on, keep going. I'm following you. I'm following you, little kitty. Keep going. She's stretching. Meow, 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 meow. Hello. Hi, kitty. All right, hey, everybody. Okay, so you just kind of saw a little snippet. I went to Books A Million, but I was so hungry. It was like 11 o'clock at that point and I hadn't eaten. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna make pit stop to Taco Bell. So I got me some Taco Bell, I've had my lunch. So let's talk about what I got at Books A Million. So I didn't really end up getting a lot. I thought I was gonna just <laughs> walk out of there with so much, but I didn't and that's okay. It's not always bad to not buy a ton of stuff. So some of the things that I was looking for was the newest volume of Whisper Me a Love Song. I think that's volume seven. It's not there. It's not a big deal. I'm not in a rush to get that one because I think I'm only on volume three, maybe four. I'm not sure. I didn't know that this new volume of Kaiju number eight was out. So that was a good find. I'm happy that I found out this was out. So I got Kaiju number eight, the newest volume. 
I know I keep doing this even though I still haven't read the second volume, but look at Momo the Blood Taker. This is the newest volume, volume seven. I just can't get past how beautiful the covers are. That's on me, I know. I shouldn't be buying things based off of covers, but I did read the first volume. <laughs> I think in January, I'm going to do a vlog where I read, I'm, I'm gonna go back to reading like the first volume of like 10 series that I haven't started yet. And then, you know, pick some more shit up. But the other volumes there that I was like, I think I'll, it, it's so funny because it's like, why do I get this and not that? So like, what what is that? Um, Record of Ragnarok. They've had a new volume out for a minute. I didn't pick that one up. So I was like, oh, I'll just wait on it. There was one more that I was like, I'm going to wait on it. I can't remember. Oh, Emakoi. I think I showed that one. I'm still, I, I don't think I've gotten the last volume. Maybe, maybe I did. I, I need to pick it up and continue reading it because I kind of stopped, I think, at volume five. So I passed on that. But I did get, and let me make sure this is not St. Martin's Press. Pretty sure it is not. I don't even think it's under the umbrella. Make sure. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. So I got The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim. It was on sale for $6.97. So I was like, bitch, let's go ahead and get it. I got six Crimson Cranes for Christmas. So I was like, eh, you know what? Fuck, it's on sale. Let me go for it. Uh, Her Radiant Curse is another book by this author that I want. I'm pretty sure it's by the same author. And I'm like, oh, I want it. But hey, there's a good chance it might go on sale at some point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off because technically I haven't read anything by Elizabeth Lim yet. So I'm gonna take my time. Ooh. Wow. Oh, so close, so close. Still had a little red left. But yeah, that was my haul <laughs> from Books A Million. They did have a, a few books on the uh, buy one, get one 50% off. I just was not really feeling those necessarily. So I was like, eh. If I'm gonna get this, I think I might just get it from the library instead of buying it. I still buy romance sometimes, but not as often as I used to. And I kind of feel like I'm in a, like a slump for buying romance at this point. So I'm either gonna get it from the library, or I'm just gonna get it on my Kindle. But yeah, so what I did for the rest of the night last night was I just read more of the Rachel Gillig book. I didn't pick up any other volumes of manga. But what I am going to be doing, like I said today, is finishing the other volumes that I wanted to finish to get myself to 300 volumes. So to get myself to 300 books read for the year. So I read two last night. That means I have eight. Yeah, I think I have eight more volumes to read. We're going to finish the last two volumes of Sweat and Soap, like I said I was going to do. I'm going to... You know, we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure it out. But the ones I know that I will be reading next are Sweat and Soap. So without further ado, let's get into the reading of it all. Okay, we've taken a break because my husband hung those shelves for me, the ones that are up the wall. Very exciting. So I've kind of started to organize this shelf a bit more, which has opened up a lot of space at Zibodem. But I also have all this space there now. I've got some space here. I'm thinking I might move Naruto over. <sighs> Gonna enjoy it while it lasts because I still have to do a haul video <laughs> of all the stuff I got for Christmas 
my office is such a mess. It, it's kind of freaking me out. So I'm gonna enjoy this little amount of space that I've created for myself until I'm done with the video and then have to find a place for everything. <laughs> okay, so as you guys saw, getting everything put together here. But because of that, I know that I need to move some volumes over. So I'm actually changing what I'm reading right now for this vlog because I have space down there and I wanna put mostly books I've read. So right now I'm reading The Yakuza's Bias, <laughs> volume two. I already finished all of, all of what I needed to read for Sweat and Soap. I'm gonna read Tsugumi Project, and I'm going to read the second volume of Blue Lock, just so I can finally get get that there. I mean, it doesn't have to be immediate, but I'm like, I don't want to move them and then forget about them, because that's very likely to happen. But I'm so happy so far. It looks so good. So I moved prison school up, because it just like fit perfectly. And even though I don't plan on rereading that anytime soon, um, I still love the covers. Like, I still love the way prison school looks. I love how colorful it is. And I don't mind it being there. Overlord is above it. Psychopaths. And then Kari. Fakes love? I, I can't remember what that one is. It's fine. Um, yeah, because I finished Pluto, Pluto's on the bottom. Um, I, I just, I just kind of try to figure out as I went. But yes, so I still have a lot of space. Like I said, I'm going to cherish it while I can but I'm going to finish these and then I only have to read one more volume to hit 300 volumes um I know I didn't mention this earlier but you saw a clip me and my husband went to this restaurant called chum chum so we ha I basically went to work with my husband today it was just going to two stores one of them being one that was closed and that's when we went to chum chum because he went there before and it was so good i even got onigiri to go the boba that was so good and then i got this really nice coffee but i can't remember what it was called I tried to insert a picture of it but it was so good but yeah so i'm gonna finish this up and then i'll get back to y'all with the final explanation if i hit 300 volumes so yeah i'm excited and i'll see you guys again Give me one second. I should be done reading soon. Ah! My 300th book. I finally did it. This is the first year of my life keeping track, although I do think this is the first year of my life, reading 300 books. I'm so proud of myself. That was just a personal goal. Uh, once I got past like 250 books, I was like, I think I can read to 300. And I figured, you know, the year's almost over. Let me just try. And I did it. So I read A Witch's Love at the End of the World. I basically read this entire short little three volume series this month. It was really, really good. Very lovely. Today is New Year's Eve. It's already pretty late. My parents came over. We made uh, crab legs, burgers, corn on the cob. I made greens and black eyed peas. We also did something else and I can't remember what it is. But yeah, it was a lovely, it was a lovely time with my family and we played a game. We're playing this like legacy game with my parents. It was so much fun. So it was a good way to, you know, end the new year. I'm going to try to get as much cleaning as I can get done tonight before it's midnight because not only do I not want to clean tomorrow, but you know, I'm trying to follow some of those little things that people do like, oh, don't clean on the 1st of January do all your deep cleaning on December 31st so we shall see but yeah it, it, it's been fun so since tomorrow is going to be the first and that's when I'm going to be posting this let's just do a quick recap of everything I ended up reading towards the end I don't feel like I've read a lot of stuff this month I think I just had to read like 10 more things 
And I think I knew that pretty early on in December. I can't remember when I texted my sister to let her know that, but I haven't read a lot this, this month, but I've, I've read a lot of manga. So some series I finished and that's why I actually want to talk about them. So, uh, a Witch's Love at the End of the World. This was really good. It's about these two girls, Alice and Mari. They are witches, except Mari is half witch and half human. The whole background for the stories of the witches who kind of like live in an exclusive school, people know about witches kind of. They are working for humans but their ulterior motive is to eventually kill all the humans or at least, you know, enslave them because of like the witch hunts many, many years ago. And Mari is interesting because she's half human. The whole point for these witches is you can't fall in love. And I think you know what this, I think you know where this is going because this is a GL. It was very, very 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 beautiful like if this was put on on screen with like brilliant colors it would be really gorgeous to to watch for sure i don't i don't know man like so very pretty covers wholesome nothing nothing uh required for it to be wrapped in plastic or anything it is teen but it was good i would recommend this if you want a short gl series that actually has a bit of action in it too. I'd recommend that. Action, obviously that's a little subjective, I guess, because you probably, when, when someone thinks of action in manga, they're probably thinking like Naruto, Jujutsu Kaisen. I don't mean it that way, but it's fine. Uh, I think I mentioned, I read Sakamoto Days. I read Call of the Night. I'm continuing to read Jujutsu Kaisen still enjoying it. Jujutsu Kaisen, I'm taking like a really long time to get through this. I, I feel kind of bad about it, but at the same time, it's like, I might as well take my time because the magic system is kind of confusing. Most people would agree. I finished the last volume of the Geek X Hitman. I can't remember if I told you guys about this when I changed my mind about what I was going to read once I was rearranging my office, which is still very dirty. A good ending a good ending to a short series. I wish that it had even been like five volumes total. So two more for me to just have like a little bit more time with these characters, but it was so good. I think that this series is perfect for a laugh. If you want something that's funny, you will like the Geek Exit Man. If you want something that <laughs> is wholesome in some ways, but then like not raunchy, I can't, I can't think of the right word, but kind of along that vein you will like the geek x hit man and found family what i liked the way this ended i think it was a good ending to this series i also read the third volume of sugumi project i i like it i like it so far i'm enjoying it i don't know where we're going next how did this end again definitely ended on a cliff oh yeah 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 it, it, it ended on a cliffhanger something is about to attack them I think it's really good read volume two of the Yakuza's bias now it's growing on me so I remember when I read the first volume a few months ago I think I was trying really hard not to compare it to the geek x hitman kind of similar kind of similar but clearly I didn't do a good enough job because I was disappointed in the first volume because I think I was comparing it and you can't compare the two but I loved the second volume. I thought it was really funny. I might reread the first volume now that the Geek X Hitman is over. But I, I enjoy this. I think it's good. I, th I think uh, the Yakuza's Bias will be one that I that I keep going with. Kowloon Volume 5. I wish I could show y'all the last... The last panels in this. I don't know where this is going, but I'm enjoying the ride, dude. This is so good. I love this story. Genuinely, I love this story. I just don't know where it's gonna go, and it's so good. I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss for words. I, I hate the fact that I have to wait till volume six is released. You know, I hate waiting, but I must 
if I'm going to keep reading it as soon as I get it. And it's so, so annoyed with myself because like I sit here and I'm like, oh, I have to wait. How long did I have volumes one through four sitting on the shelf, not, not having read them? So who am I, who am I to complain? And I finally finished Sweat and Soap. I know I vlogged myself reading a few of these. Uh, I think that this is a solid little series of 11 volumes, right? Yeah, 11 volumes. You're following our main characters, Asako and Kotaro and, is it Kotaro? Yeah, Kotaro. From our first volume where he smells her and she's sweaty and she's embarrassed about it, but he's like, no, you're, yo stank is sexy girl. <laughs> And, you know, them having kind of like a little office romance, dealing with like navigating a new relationship. Maybe one character hasn't had a relationship before, having over overprotective siblings, people like you, supportive friends, supportive family. Uh, then like going back in time and seeing the bullying, seeing Kotaro help his mother who is, uh, who is legally blind and is slowly losing her sight like every day. And I think really towards the end of this series, she, she is just completely blind. That's not really a spoiler for y'all. There's a lot of really good representation in Sweat and Soap, which I really like. And that's why I would recommend it. I think you're gonna get wholesomeness, like I said, friendships, relationships, family, found family, but you will also get a bit of spice because they do knock boots in here, but it's nothing like, crazy I don't were any of these actually wrapped in plastic like I wonder if they were because like you don't see a nip but like you see like the curvature of a boob and I feel like I've I've read some that have a curvature of a boob and that shit was wrapped in plastic but I don't remember sweat and soap being wrapped in plastic tell me if I'm wrong in the comments if some of these were if you bought them as single volumes like I did but yes good reading month today was a good day like I said I had lunch with my family. Earlier today, uh, I did my book club with my sister, my mom, and my cousin. We talked about the book Moon of the Crested Snow. I think that's how you say it. I'll put an image. So that is, a, that is another book that I finished this month. I, sometimes I don't include the book club pick and what I'm talking about when I'm doing a wrap up. I don't know why. I don't know why I don't do that a lot of the time, but that was really good. More novella, really short. A lot of the stuff happened like off screen that we didn't see happen, but it's dystopian, it's thriller. It was very good. I would highly recommend it. It made me that much more excited to read it when I started to see more people on TikTok that I follow have like, oh, this was like some of the books that I really loved. And then they recommended that one. And I was like, oh, okay, let, let me go ahead and listen to it. It was on my Hoopla app for my library and easy listen. I listened to that in one sitting, two times the speed, perfect, sounded great. Y'all know I like two times the speed. And yeah, yeah, that's really it. That was my day. That was my week. I only had, oh, God, I'm so sad. I have like three days off until I have to go back to work for the rest of the year and I'm gonna try to be positive about it. Okay, something that I need to do moving into next year, which I did do like I did do this year, okay? I actually did start out positive. <laughs> but my enthusiasm fell off as the as the damn month went by. And that's not fun for anyone, okay? It's not fun for anyone when you don't have any enthusiasm. But I'm going to try really hard to maintain a level of excitement for life, a zest for life, in 2024. Uh, hopefully I can achieve my dream of being a stay-at-home wife. That's what I really want. That would be a good miracle, y'all. And then maybe I could do this full-time. Hey, I don't have to get paid for it. I just want to be able to read in peace and make this content in peace. That would be lovely. But yes, thank you so much for watching my video. You guys will see this tomorrow on the 1st. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do this today on the 31st or tomorrow, but I just released a different video. So hopefully you all have seen that one. If not, I don't know how to put the cars. But yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching my video. If you like the video, please like the video. If you like, like, and subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on other social media. It's in the description box down below. And you have a good day. Goodbye. Oh, and happy new year. Goodbye.